Welcome to this final newsletter of first term. Throughout this term, the achievement of our community in maintaining business as usual has been remarkable. We've been able to maintain face-to-face -face schooling for all classes and continue to provide learning for all students, despite many of us being offsite due to COVID. And you'll notice that I'm in an unfamiliar um, uh, recording site today uh, as COVID has, has managed to make its way into the Patch household and I'm isolating at home. But I'd like to thank and congratulate all staff, students and families on the achievements of first term. At the end of term, we farewell a number of staff. Shannon Ebeling, Music, Tom Elliott, VCAL are finishing their time with us and we wish both well in their new endeavours. Die Makings from Ed Support, Joy Whiteside, Heather Stapleton and Melissa Wills are all finishing up from the library. We thank Di, Joy and Melissa and wish them well in their new roles. We also thank Heather and wish her well for a fulfilling retirement. Next term, David Shelters will be on leave for the duration of the term and Mark Turner will also be on leave for the first four weeks. Natasha Solzanyuk is commencing parental leave. So we wish Dave, Mark and Tash well for their time away from St Joseph's. I will be taking renewal leave during term two. This was originally scheduled during 2020 and I'm looking forward to a retreat, some study to learn more of our only Australian saint, Sister Mary of the Cross MacKillop and an indigenous immersion um, experiences in Tasmania and the Northern Territory. During my absence, Mark Kennedy will be college principal with Lisa Pope as college deputy. The heads of school will take on some additional responsibilities throughout this time. Camps and excursions are often the highlight of the year for students and our year sevens have enjoyed their camps, the last of which were held in recent weeks. I'd like to record my gratitude to the staff who made this positive experience possible for our younger students. In recent days, we've been notified that the twice weekly testing regime using rapid antigen tests will be continued for the first month of next term. We're asking that every student test negative on a rat prior to returning to school on Tuesday, April the 26th. Test kits to be used during the first weeks of term will be distributed via homeroom on that day. Next term, our year 12s have their annual renewals, which are conducted in house groups off site from May 4 to 6. This is the second week of term. Staffing these retreats necessitates some adjustments for other Mount Sion students as follows. So on Wednesday, the 4th of May, year 10 and 11 students will be at school all day. But on Thursday, the 5th, year 10 students will be expected at school, while year 11s will have remote learning. On Friday, the 6th, the year 11s will have on-site classes and be at school, along with a, an English sack in period one and two, and the year 10s will have remote learning on that day. Please note that Westcourt and Waterford students will have classes on site as normal for these three days. Next weekend is Easter, the most holy of Christian commemorations. And in considering an appropriate Easter reflection for this newsletter, I was thinking about the contrast between Jesus' treatment during his triumphal entry to Jerusalem, which we commemorated last Sunday on Palm Sunday, when he was hailed as a king and venerated by the crowds. And then his treatment five days later on Good Friday, spat on, tortured, denied by his friend and executed on a cross in the most undignified way imaginable. Students are sometimes bemused by the preeminence of the cross as our Christian symbol, because it is a symbol of death and torture. But it's important to remember that if there's no cross, there's no resurrection. And the resurrection is at the very core of our faith because it reminds us of the ultimate triumph of light over darkness, life over death and hope over despair. 
And as we watch the daily struggles of so many, including those in Ukraine, it's good to have such a reminder. I wish you and your family every joy for the celebration of Easter. God bless.